Hello and welcome to week 5 lectures. This week we will extend our work from last week. We'll start looking at comparison of two proportions and then we'll introduce this new idea called odds ratio, which will be one of the most important things we'll look at from here on. This material is largely from the Stats Sleuth book, chapter 18. Here you'll find some of the data sets we'll use be, will be from this book and this from, from this chapter as well. So let's have a start. So the idea here is we're going to now compare two proportions. The small example we'll start off with is this daylight saving example where we had referendum in 2009, I think, regarding daylight saving, whether we want this in WA or not. And so out of the number of voters we had in the metro area, 434,000 odd voters, 857, sorry, yeah, sorry, 434,000 odd out of 857,000, almost 858,000 said yes. But in the regional areas, out of 286,000 voters, only 85,000 said yes. So just based on those numbers, it looks like there is large support for daylight saving in the metro areas, but very little support in the regional areas of Western Australia. Here is this same data presented as a two-way table. So we've got here on the top the yes or no vote, and along the side here in the rows we've got the metro and regional areas. So that means essentially we've got a total, total of 100, well, 1,144,000 odd voters. Out of those in the metro, there were 857, almost 858,000 and in the country 286,000 and in the metro that many said yes regional that many said yes total who said yes is this many out of the total number of voters you'll find this data online if you will have a look at that so how do we compare, compare the two proportions just row proportions here calculation wise it would A is the number of yes voters in metro and B is the number of no voters in metro so the proportion here is going to be A over the total. So this is proportion of yes voters in the metro, a little more than 50%. Whereas if you do the same calculation for regional WA, you will find that we've got the number of yes voters is C, 85,000 odd, and the number of no voters is 200,000 odd. And you take a look at the ratio here, you find it's only about 30% in in regional Western Australia who support daylight saving. So we want to compare two proportions. So the idea here is that if I could take a look at the difference between the metro voters and the regional voters, that comes here to about 20%, 0 0.206 odd. Now if I was to take a sample of data, and then compare proportion of yes votes in metro versus the proportion of yes votes in regional Australia, Western Australia, what am I expected to see? What would I see here? The question here is, how do I compare those two proportions? So that's what we'll be setting up here. It's a little mathematical to start off with. We'll do this in lectures here by looking at the calculations by hand, but later in the lab this week, we'll take a look at how we can do this more simply in R as well. So population-wise, we've got two populations here. The first population is, again, the X size here, the individual observations, X1 to Xn1. N1 is the size of this the first sample. Each of these is Bernoulli with probability or proportion of successes P1. In population 2, my sample is of size n2 observations are y1 till yn2 and here proportion is different each of these is Bernoulli with probability or proportion p2 and we're taking this as of course iid samples here we've got identically and independent random variables here so that's the setup for these two populations now proportion estimator here we know is the sample proportion which is the sum over n, we saw this in last week. The sum here of the exercise gives us the total number of yeses or successes over total number of the sample size. And for the second population, it's going to be similar. 
what I'm after here is the difference, which is PD, P1 minus P2. And this is what I'm going to base my hypothesis on. I'm comparing these two proportions here. So, what I'm looking at here is, first of all, I require to get its sample distribution. Now, if N1 and N2 are large, we know from the result we saw previously that uh, we have each of the P1 hat and the P2 hat. The sample proportions will be normal. And so that means the distance is also normal. The important thing about a normal distribution is if I scale it by just simply multiplying or shift it by subtracting or adding a number, or if I add two normal distributions, the result stays normal. This is something special to the normal distribution. So here, if I've got P1 hat and P2 hat, and they're both approximately normal, then the difference is also normal. The way it works is, of course, the difference will have mean, which is, well, PD, the difference in the means, but the variance will add. So there's some results we haven't covered mathematically. If I've got two random variables, say x and y, the variance of x plus y is equal to variance of x plus variance of y, as long as x and y are independent. And this is why independence is such an important concept and important property and requirement here. Otherwise, it's not just simply variance of x plus variance of y, there's some other covariance terms as well. But if we have independence of x and y, the variance of x plus y is simply the variance of x plus variance of y. Interestingly, if I have a minus here as well, it doesn't change this. Variance of x minus y is also variance of x plus variance of y. Now, that holds in the case where x and y are independent. If they weren't independent, as I say, you'd have some covariance terms here as well. I don't want to go into the details over here. But you have some covariance terms there, and with a minus there, that minus sign will come with the minus covariance term here. Those who might have done some first year tests, stats or seen this somewhere else will know what I'm talking about. But mainly, my main interest here is the, here the variance of the difference here, which is, should be P1 actually hat, I know just my typo there, P1 hat minus P2 hat. The variance here is simply the variance of the first one plus the variance of the second one. And additionally, as I said earlier, what I'll find is I'll get some distribution thing there as well. So if I'm comparing two proportions and my hypotheses are to start off with that the difference here is zero. In other words, I've got here PD is zero, same thing as saying P1 minus P2 is zero. Or alternatively, PD is bigger than zero, or PD is less than zero, or PD is not equal to zero. One of those appropriate hypotheses. And then, if I assume the null hypothesis is true, in other words, under the null hypothesis, the distribution I'm going to get is, well, you see, I had previously here, the mean was P, well, PD here. The mean of PD here is going to be zero under my null hypothesis. So I get the normal distribution here, as we were saying earlier, the difference here, because P1 and P2 are both normal, the difference is also normal. But the mean is now zero because I've assumed it to be zero. I've said that my difference in the two population proportions is zero. And the variance is as before here. Now, the one issue here is, how do we actually work out this variance? Well, I've assumed that P1 and P2 are equal here by the null hypothesis. So what we do here is, what we're going to do is take a look at a combined or pooled proportion. And that's simply calculated by taking a look at all the yes both all the successes. This is total number of successes. And this is the total sample size. So that gives me my overall or combined proportion. And so then in the formula for the standard error of PD. Previously I had here P1 and P1 and P2 and P2, but since my null hypothesis assumes that they are equal, I'm replacing the P1 and the P2, P1 had P2 to P2 had, by the combined proportion of successes.
So this is important. Then I have here my normal distribution. And under the normal distribution, I can calculate the combined proportion over here. And so then I can also calculate the standard error by the formula here. And if I look at the distribution of this, nothing more serious here. I've got a grid defined here. So this is a sequence. You'll find this in the R notes. It starts at negative 0.25 and goes up till 0.25. The length is 301. So altogether 301 points in there, equally spaced. And then I'm plotting here. This is the x coordinates. The y coordinates is d norm. d norm gives you the actual value of the normal distribution at these points here with mean zero and the variance as I worked out here, which is the variance of uh, the uh, difference under the null hypothesis. And now uh, the rest of it, it should be fairly straightforward. So here is the plot. You can see what's going on here. It's normal approximately. Uh, plot of the thing is normal. This is the variance and this is the mean in the middle over here. So, my interest, of course, was in hypothesis testing here. So, I'm going to do some calculations. Let's look at this example of the daylight saving. I've got a sample of a size 1,000. So, sample of a, of a size 1,000. So, if we can take a look at what's going on here. The sum over here, that's 530. Nine. And over here, there's 450, 61. This is my total of 1,000 here. So sample of size 1,000, 539 from, 539 have the no vote, and 461 have the yes vote. In the metro, I've got 315 no votes, and in the regional, I've got 348 no votes. So I'm looking at this, and I'm going to do some calculations here. So looking at how this table works, what I've done is I've read the data, which you can do yourself. It is in the uh, uh, data folder. Then I've made a table of this. So this is a table. Now what I, what you can see is the table there, Paul, is okay. It makes a table of this side of this kind anyway. And I've saved this in this object over here. Now these braces around the end, the brackets around the end means. While it does this computation, it also will print out the results for me. So I've got the table printed here as well. So n1 is a sum of day poll 1, comma, tab of this comma 1. So the first entry here in this square brackets refers to the row, and the other one refers to the column. So I'm looking at not the row, but the column. The sum of the first column here, which is this one here, I'm looking at the number of votes here in the metro. The other one is the sum of the second column, which is looking at the number of votes in regional. When I take a look at a specific entry like 2 1, so you see, in this case it says take a look at the second row and the first column. So this is working out the number of yes votes in metro, and this is 2 2, so second row and second column. It's working out the number of yes votes in regional. And then I've got the P1 hat observed as the number of yes votes over the sample size, and the same as P2 hat observed. I've got the difference. All those things are there. And you can see that I've got uh, the uh, values as printed out there P1 hat, P2 hat, and the difference. So the next thing is going to be to uh, take a look at a P value based on the standard error here. And so, the standard error over here is p hat se height, and I will show you the code for that afterwards. But essentially, I've got here, under the hypothesis test, whatever the value I had here for p hat, the combined, is what I'm putting in here, and working on the standard error for that, as according to my earlier formula. And here, the p value is quite small, which means that uh, it's pretty clear that I'm not going to get, well, I'm going to get a significant result here. So well, the way I worked out this here is it's 1 minus p norm. I went bigger than, so I'm taking it as 1 minus less than or equal to. I could equally have used this lower tail false idea. So in this case, if I take it as the same same values in here, but if I make lower tail false, it doesn't work out probability of less than, but it works out probability of bigger than. So probability here is probability of p hat d is bigger than is what I'm after. So lower tail falls give me that. By default in this particular function, 
the lower tail is equal to true. I'm setting it false explicitly, so it gives me the upper tail probability. So here, based on this hypothesis test, I'm concluding that the true proportion of yes voters in metro area is higher than that in regional because I have essentially the difference says metro minus regional, and I'm looking at this bigger than zero. All right. Confidence interval, how do I calculate that? We'll do that in the next lecture. Thank you. Bye.